Good morning, good morning, good morning, family guy. Welcome back to the Morning Devo. It's your brother, Sam Lopez, also known as DJ Sam Rock, Sell Out Radio Network, Soul Winners, Inc., Soul Winners with a Z.org, and also live that Soul Winners with a Z.org. We're streaming on all the major platforms right now on our podcast. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And we're also live right here on the social media networks and on live that Soul Winners with a Z.org. So listen. We just went through 50 episodes, 50 sessions, morning devos, celebrating the Lord and what he said and his quotes. Amen. And I just want to say there's a lot more. Amen. There's a lot more to it. Um, But I decided, amen, with some prayer and some thought to take a turn now and, and go into different areas of scripture to do our morning devos. So I just want to say thank you for going through those 50 episodes. That's a lot. That's a lot of episodes on quoting Jesus. Amen. We went through a, a Holy Week as well. Amen. When we were doing Holy Week and we were still focusing, especially on Holy Week, we were still focusing on the Lord Jesus and what he said, what he did. Amen. Um, how people accused him of doing this and doing this that and being someone else other than who he said he was. And we went through all of that. Amen. It's all in the scriptures. But I'm here to say, listen, it's a new day. It's a new start. Amen. And I'm glad that God continues to inspire me by way of his Holy Spirit to keep him moving. Um, So thank you for hanging out with me for the Jesus Said What series. Amen. 50 episodes. Um, glory to God. Amen. Sister Joanne, good morning. God bless you. It's good to see you on the morning, Devo. So listen, so I decided to keep it moving, keep it going. Amen. You know, I'm going to revisit his quotes. Uh, every month I have a podcast that I put on social media uh, once a month. Uh, we're in the fifth month of the year. So it'll be episode number five coming soon. And it's uh, a quote from Jesus and where he gets it. From in the old covenant, amen. Like, what's he quoting? And I like to keep on going with those because a lot of people don't know that when Jesus says a thing, it is a thing. A lot of people don't know that, so I cannot assume that people know that Jesus quoted certain things, that he said certain things. Because a lot of people think, oh, that's a saying that I heard from you know my parents or from my family members, or it's a tradition, or it's even a some people even call it legends. Something that Jesus said. Some some people say, oh, that's a legend of so-and-so and so-and-so. And not realizing that our Lord and our Savior, the Lord Jesus, says something and he means something. Amen? And that's incredible to me that God will quote something. Amen? And we would say it and not realize where or who it's coming from. Right? So thank you so much. Jesus said what series? 50 episodes. We did it. Amen. And there's more to it. A lot more, way more. I could literally go on for the rest of my life quoting what Jesus says and doing Bible studies and morning devos. Um, but today um, we celebrate it and we're going to keep it, keep it moving. And today I'm calling this one. I depend on God. Go ahead, go ahead and say it. Humble yourself and say, I depend on God. That's a humbling situation right there. Uh, we live in society, in a society right now that's autonomous, that everybody thinks they could do their own thing whenever they want, how they want, and they don't need God. So they're independent and they're self-dependent. That's the society, the culture we're living in. But for the humble ones, for the ones who know that we need God, I decided to dedicate this one to you and to me and to the Lord and admit that I depend on God. The question is, when is it the hardest for you to depend on God? We're going to be in Philippians chapter 4, verse number 12. When everything is all good, the bank account is good, your health is good, family is good, relationship with your husband and wife is good, relationship with your children are good. Um, are you still depending on God? Or are you just like, wow, this is a good season, going with the flow, praise the Lord, hallelujah, amen, and keep it moving. Listen, I'm learning, I'm learning that even in the good times, I'm not going to forget 
my dependence on God. And when the bad times come, amen, even more. How about that? I know it's hard for a lot of people. And sometimes if I'm not careful, it could happen to me. And that when the good times are here and there's really nothing going on that I need to, you know, you know, complain about. I try my hardest not to complain. Ask my wife. I should tell you, I try my hardest not to complain. But when I do complain, if I do complain, I'm starting to learn that my dependence on God is not based upon the good times or the bad times. It's based upon my relationship with the Lord. He's the one who gives me every single thing that I need. But the things that I want, sometimes he'll stop those things and he won't give me the things that I want because he loves me and he knows what's best for me. And he knows if he gives me certain things, it might cause me to get distracted and lose my dependency on him. What about you? Amen. You know what it is. You know when it's the hardest for you to depend on God, to depend on God. Amen. But when you say, I depend on God, and you admit that, it's humbling you, and it's freeing you, and it's freeing me, and humbling me. Amen. We'll be in Philippians chapter number 4, verse number 12, and see what the Apostle Paul was talking about. Amen. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, don't hesitate to leave it on the live chat. Also, if you haven't signed up to live, that's so winners with a Z dot org. What are you waiting for? Do it. It takes less than 40 seconds. I promise you, you put a picture, your name, and your best email address so I can stay in connection with you outside of social media platforms and all that. And then you'll be on my very important people list. And I'll continue to pray and um, continue to connect with you and tell you what's going on in the ministry behind the scenes. Amen. Things that I don't want to say in a total public like this, I would say it through an email and through connecting with you that way as well. So let's pray. After we pray, we'll take 60 seconds to share this out with as many people as possible. And when we come back, we'll dive into Philippians chapter 4, verse number 12. Lord Jesus, I thank you today. I thank you, Lord Father, for your energy that you give me this morning. I thank you, Lord God, that you are faithful and true in all your ways. And I pray, Lord God, for this day to go according to your will over my life and over my family's life and over every single life represented on the other side of the screen and on the other side of this mic. I bless them in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord God, a hedge of protection, health to their body, strength to their bones. I pray, Lord God, that you would continue to empower us and encourage us through your Holy Spirit, through your word, and that we will be dependent on you and we will be good with that. We will consider you first in all our things. Help us, renew us, restore us, redeem us, continue to engage our hearts and minds as we go through this born again experience. And I pray, Lord God, for all my friends and family members and even my enemies that have not yet put their hope and trust in you. I pray today will be their day of salvation and that today, Lord God, you will reveal yourself to them in a personal way, in a powerful way, in a way that they could know for sure that you are real and that you are sovereign in control and that you love them just as you love me and the rest of your children. In Jesus' name, I pray this by faith. Amen and amen. Sister Joanne says, I asked my brothers and sisters to pray for me. I have to go for surgery tomorrow. I have to be there at 7 in the morning tomorrow at Cedar Crest. Amen. Father God, we pray for this surgery to go according to your will and purpose over my sister Joanne's life. Touch her body. Touch every single person, every surgeon, every nurse, every um, person that's doing the anesthesia. Everyone in that situation, Lord God, empower them by way of your Holy Spirit. So that way she knows the hand of God is upon her body and that she would come out on the other side knowing that she is in safe hands, the safest hands possible in the hands of the Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. So we pray that everything goes well. I expect a praise report. Amen. So let's go forward. Let's share this out for a minute. When we come back, we'll get right into today's morning Devo. I depend on God. I'll be right back.
Wow, 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 wow. That minute goes by so fast. I always forget that. Amen. So let's get back into this. Let's go for it. Amen. And let's see. This word challenged me when I was going through it um, last night. And I was like, man, uh, Apostle Paul is on to something and hit a nerve. Amen. In my heart and in my soul. And hopefully it will do the same for you. Um, what I love about the word of God is that it hits people different. Right. It'll give me a revelation. It'll give you a revelation. It'll touch me in a certain way. It will touch you in a certain way. Why is that? Because the word of God is alive. We're not reading a word that just like it, it, you read it, the words go to the ground and die. No, this is a living word. So when we speak it, when we repeat it, when we read it, the living word of God will transform, renew, restore, redeem. The word of God performs exactly what God wants it to perform. It's a living word, breathing word, an inspired word. Amen. The Bible says that the word of God, the Bible, is God breathed. Amen. So it never returns to the Lord void. It's powerful and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. Let's go for it. I depend on God on the morning devo. Philippians chapter 4, verse 12. Amen. The Bible says it like this. This is Apostle Paul. If you know anything about the Apostle Paul, look him up. Amen. And you know that this is an amazing portion of scripture. God inspired the apostle to write this down. Philippians chapter 4, verse number 12. I know to get along and live humbly in difficult times. And I also know how to enjoy abundance and live in prosperity. So he sees both sides of the coin. Amen. And as for me, I did too. I know how it is. I came from the hood. Amen. For projects of Brooklyn, New York. I know what little looks like. I know what empty fridges look like. I know what a poverty looks like. I know what situations that are bad look like. Amen. I know what difficult times are. And I also know how to enjoy abundance and live in prosperity. Praise God. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing life. Whether well fed or going hungry, whether having an abundance or being in need. You see that? You see how honest the scriptures are? You see how honest the Apostle Paul is being? You see how honest how Holy Spirit is inspiring Apostle Paul to write this down? Let it be so. Let it be known that he is fully dependent on God. Listen, don't be ashamed to tell people that you depend on God. I know it's not a popular thing. To be a Christ follower. But I don't care about popularity. Haven't you noticed? I have a YouTube channel with over th with thousands of videos. And very little subscribers. And very little viewership. You think that I'm worrying about that? Because I'm just looking for the one person. Amen. To look at the videos. And to get, give their life to the Lord. And that one person could cause a revolution. It's happened already. There's been people from all over the world. Testifying. Glorifying God. And why? Because they took heed to the word of God through a podcast, through a video, and they touched lives all around um, their immediate world, right? From where they're at. So that's what I'm depending on. I'm depending on God to do what God can only do. And that's to move people to him, himself. So when is it hardest for you to depend on God? I want to submit right now to you that it's hardest for you to depend on God when you're not realizing that God is all you need. In other words, you know, a lot of people don't believe in miracles until they need one. And a lot of people don't believe in God until they realize he's the only one that they have. <laughs> he's the only one that could get them out of situations. I've been in situations, I'll tell you right now. I've been in situations that if it had not been for God, I would not be here in the studio, on the camera, on the mic right now. Absolutely 100%. I'm telling you, if it had not been for God, I would not be saved. I would not be born again, obviously. I would not be married. Amen. I would not have children if it had not been for God. So I know I'm humbling myself. I'm humble enough to say that I'm dependent on God. 
And I know a lot of people get angry by when people say that, when we as believers say that we believe Jesus is God, people get angry. And I always wonder why are they angry about what other people believe? If this is not true and this is all fantasy and make believe, why would anybody be angry? Do you watch cartoons? I watch cartoons, right? I have kids that watch cartoons. That's make believe, right? Yet we watch it. I don't get up and argue about it. Tell my children, stop looking at that. That's fake. I'm not mad that they're watching cartoons. Amen. Sometimes the content of those cartoons, if we're not careful and watching what type of cartoons our kids are watching, then I'll get mad because sometimes the content or a lot of times the content is trying to, you know, raise our children to believe certain things, the narrative of the culture. But other than that, I'm not going to argue or get mad with my daughters for watching cartoons. Because I know it's made believe, they know it's made believe, and let's keep moving. But people, grown ups I've met, are angry at me and angry at my brothers and sisters all around the world for believing that Jesus is God and for saying that we depend on God and they get angry. If it's not true, if, not, if it's made believe, then let us think, let us, let us, let us think this is true then, right? I almost was going to say leave us alone, but I'm not going to say that. I want you to see if that's you, if you're a skeptic, a cynic, an atheist, agnostic, a person who's in another religion system and think that what we're saying is phony. I just want you to think about what we believe. I just want you to see the scripture for yourself. I want you to hear how the apostles and disciples in the New Testament, how they thought. So that way you can make your own decision instead of following what you're following, following who you're following. And if you're steeped into some kind of religious tradition, or even if you're into some kind of spirituality, or if you're into yoga or to the you know kar- karmic you know activities and all that stuff from the East, I want you to think honestly, are you depending on what you know to be true or are you depending on the true God? There's a big difference. And the question is, when is it hardest for you to depend on God? In the good times or in the bad times? It's a very good question if you think about it. If you're honest about it, amen? God gives you the answer. You only know your situation right now between you and the Lord. Amen? So let's break this down a little bit more. Let's break this down. Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 4, verse number 12, he says, I know, I know how to get along in this life. Do you know that every day that you wake up, you can have plans. I'm a, I'm a dreamer and I'm a dream really while I'm sleeping. I dream when I'm awake. In other words, I see things and I know which ones are from God and which ones are just from like my imagination. I'm starting to learn that as well. But I'm a dreamer. I see things before they happen. I'll say things and speak things before they actually exist. This studio, for instance, it was uh, uh, what I spoke years ago. I used to tell my wife and she used to giggle and say, yeah, okay." I said, no, um, seriously, I think that the Lord is telling me just to get things together, get things ready, um, because the ministry is going to have everything it needs, you know, tech and, and technology whatever I need, right? It came to pass in the time of COVID in the time when it was getting a little bit harder for me to believe in what the Lord was saying in my life. I was like, um, it's COVID. In the same year of COVID, I purchased a vehicle, right? That I use to help support my family because I, I deliver meds and I'm independent, everything and driving, Right? During COVID, right before the shutdown of the world, amen, God allowed me to seal that deal, the vehicle. That same year, the year of COVID, when the world was shutting down, um, Amazon was still delivering equipment um, so that way I could put the studio together, the dream studio that I wanted, amen, um, to put together during COVID, during the time when people were like losing hope. Losing faith, 
church buildings were closing down, ministries were folding, um, people were getting into all kind of uh, depression, suicidal thoughts, and things were happening. People were getting sick, obviously. Amen. And through all that, I was more dependent on God and what he was doing. Amen. Than the situation at hand. So I wasn't looking at COVID as much I was as I was looking at the Christ that controls any COVID, controls any virus, amen, could reopen and shut down the world himself if he wanted to shut down the world. A virus knocked us off our so-called high horse in this United States, right? Because a lot of people are not humble enough to admit that they need God, that they need to depend on God for everything that is good. Let's leave it there because everything that is not good, I'm not going to say it's not from God. Because obviously, if you read the scriptures in the Old Covenant, you'll see that God sends evil spirits out into the nations. God controls evil spirits. And of course, God controls good spirits. He controls bad angels. and He controls good angels. Amen. It's just the truth. I know a lot of people don't like that. What do you mean? Does God use evil for his purposes? No. God doesn't have to use evil. As a matter of fact, there's no evil in God. There's only truth, light, and there's only goodness in God. But evil is in the world. So you think that God's going to leave us among the evil without letting us know that he got us? Jesus said, in this world, you will have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer. Jesus said that because he's overcome this world and its system already. We need to depend on God for every move we make for everything we need, for all the health in our body, for the strength, for the breath in our lungs, amen, over our children, over ourselves, over our finances, over our marriages, over our relationships, amen, over our jobs, over everything. So that way, God knows that, wait, we're in a position of blessing when we put our dependence on God. I know a lot of people are, I'm an independent business owner, but I still... I'm still dependent on God, who is really my boss. Amen. I depend on God to keep me fresh with my ideas, with the ministry, the radio network. I'm relaunching it by faith, fully licensed, full time. Uh, in the first day of summer, I think it's June 21st, 2023. Amen. And I'm speaking it. I've been speaking it for a minute now. I've been speaking a lot of things for a minute because If God speaks to me about a certain thing, I'll release it into the atmosphere. Why not? Amen. Also, I'm believing that I'll be a multimillionaire and you could do this too. I'm not saying like, you know, just hope for things that are impossible because with God, all things are possible. I'm also believing that before um, my daughter is a teenager, my oldest daughter, she's eight. I don't have a lot of time, but amen. That's the word that I received. I'll be a multi-minute, able to help a lot more people. Amen. A lot more people than I can help right now. How many people knows, know that money is a great slave, but it's a horrible master. And when you put money as your slave, you could tell the money what to do and who to help, how to help. Amen. And it's not only for, you know, m- my gain. It's for me to give out. I, trust me. You give me a million dollars, I'm going to try my best to give it away. Of course, I'll make investments. Of course, I'll do this. And of course, I'll do that. But my main focus, you can ask my wife, you can ask anybody who knows me. I'm always seeking out ways to reach people with the gospel message. I literally breathe that. I live it. I dream about that. Amen. And with the Raider Network, uh, I want to really um, make a stand with that so I can pass this off to on my children if they want it. Pass it off to some friends and family members if they want it. Amen. So we can help spread this gospel out to the nations. Amen. I depend on God for that. So Apostle Paul says, I know how to get along and live humbly. If you know anything about the Apostle Paul, he didn't have to live a humble life. He knew the Torah. He knew Jesus. He had a a different encounter than the disciples that were walking with Jesus had. He had a different encounter with the Lord. But he knows 
how to get along and live humbly in difficult times, he says. And I also know how to enjoy abundance and live in prosperity. Amen. So if you experience both sides of those things, I'm not I'm not ashamed of how I grew up. Amen. I grew up in situations that a lot of people would be like, oh, poor Sam, you you went through that. And I'll be like, yeah, I went through that. Amen. And now I can see the difference between good and bad. Now I can see the difference between rich and poor. Now I can see the difference between imagination, right? Imagining things to come to pass and just to have stinking thinking. I know the difference. I see the difference. That's why it's hard for people to get over on me. Amen. Because I know how to live when there's not a lot. And I know how to live when there's more than enough. And I'm in a season of having exactly what I need. Hopefully, you're in a season of having exactly what you need. You heard what I said? I'm not saying, oh, you know, I'm praying abundant prosperity. If you sow into this ministry, you'll get you'll get millions of dollars. I'm not one of those. Amen. And God forgive those who are doing that in their ministry and asking for you to sow into their ministry so God could bless you in abundance. That's There's no scripture tied to that. That's maybe emotionalism. That's how they feel. Amen. All I can say, if you donate into this ministry, you're helping this ministry and other ministries and other families get the gospel message. That's what I'm saying. Amen. That's what I'm saying. Because I know how to get along and live humbly in difficult times. And I also know how to enjoy abundance and live in prosperity. The enjoyment here is you know, popping out of the scripture. A lot of people walk around with a with a face like they ate lemons all day and they're born again. Why are you so mad? Why are you so angry? Um, why are you so ungrateful? Smile. Enjoy life because this is a short portion of it. And joy goes a long way. The kindness of God goes a long way. When people meet me and when people meet you, they should know something about us. At least, you know, Try to get an understanding of why we follow who we follow. It shouldn't be like, I'm mad all the time. I'm disgusted with the whole world. I don't have enough. I'm complaining about this, that, and the third. Um, Those are not attributes of a Christ follower. And those are not um, emotions that we should be amplifying. Those are actually emotions that we should be considering um, in prayer for God to release us from. Those type of ideas and those type of... um, You know, that type of mentality. We should have the mind of Christ according to the scriptures. Amen. We should be the most joyful people on this planet. I know times are not always good. And I'm not saying, um, I was going to say a name, but I'll leave that alone. Some preachers say that every day is a good day. And their whole ministry is based on encouragement. There's nothing wrong with encouraging people. Amen. Um, But there's something wrong in my, my framework of thinking to tell people that every day is going to be a great day. That there is wishful thinking. If you live in this world, like I live in this world, you know every day is not a good day. Have you ever saw the news and people running up in schools killing children? Can you honestly say that those people were having a good day? Their children go to school and never come back? Come on, let's be realists. Let's, let's, let's get into reality. You and me, depending on God, is the only thing we can hope for that is always going to come to pass. God has never failed me. He has never put me to shame, has has never left me broke, busted, and disgusted, has been with me through the hard times, amen, has shown me the good times, have been with me uh, when I was in my lowest, have been with me when I was rising up, amen. He's always been with me, and he has always been with you. Give him his props. The Lord Jesus is the Lord. He's the king. He's sovereign. He's the prince of peace, wonderful counselor, almighty God. What he says happens, right? What he says he means, what he means is what he says. Depend on God and you will never go unsatisfied in this life. Depend on God and you will never walk in darkness any time in your life. Depend on God and you will walk a humble life. And God is attracted to the humble people and he resists the proud. The word of God says it. You're full of pride and arrogance. You're being resisted by God. You're humble. You're being, God's getting close, closer and closer to the humble. Amen. Was Jesus a humble man of God or God man? 
or was he arrogant? Some people say, oh, he was arrogant. Look what he said to the Pharisees. Really? Read what he said to the Pharisees and understand or try to understand why he said what he said to the religious people of his time. Why he spoke how he spoke to the religious people of his time. And then you'll get an understanding of why he said a thing to those people. So in any and every circumstance, so he's covering everything in your life and in my life. Apostle Paul says, in any and every circumstance, I have learned. This is a learning process, a learning curve. Amen. You don't get up one day and be like, okay, oh, everything. I understand everything now. No, we're learning about this life. I'm in my 50s and I'm still learning about my wife, about life, about children, about finances, about ministry, about the word of God, about God himself, about the Lord, about Holy Spirit. It's a learning process. If you ever meet a, pe- a person that says, listen, you, you every time you make a statement, oh, I know that. I know, I know, I know, I know. They know everything. Be careful. That person doesn't know too much. They know a lot about nothing. Amen. Because if you're honest, you have to admit that depending on God is the starting point of learning about him. If you don't depend on God, you don't want no parts of him. Why would you want God in heaven if you don't want God while you're here on earth? If I had a mic, I'll drop it. So I have learned the secret of facing life, whether well-fed or going hungry, whether having an abundance or being in need. In other words, be considerate to what's going on in your life. Consider this, that Jesus is the one who sustains us. Jesus is the one who who maintains us. Jesus is the one who prospers us. Jesus is the one who protects us. And Jesus is the one who saved us. Amen. So don't be ashamed to say that I depend on God. So I'm out of time. I hope and pray this resonates. Philippians chapter four, read the whole chapter for yourself. And so the next time, God bless you. God keep you. And remember always that God is good. Peace.